major problem in hospitals today is C. difficile infection, which is a diarrheal illness that happens not only in hospitals, but outside the hospitals also. There have been several advances in the management and diagnosis of C. difficile infection. I'm Sahil Khanna. I'm a professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology. In the Mayo Clinic proceedings, I'm putting out an article titled, My Treatment Approach to C. difficile Infection. C. difficile infection affects about half a million Americans every year. The most common risk factors for C. difficile infection include antibiotics, being over the age of 65, and being in the hospital. Sometimes younger people who've not received antibiotics also develop C. difficile infection. There have been several advances in the management and diagnosis of this infection. And in this article, I answer some commonly asked questions about C. difficile infection, such as, when do I suspect this infection? We suspect this infection in people who've received antibiotics, who are older and have other health issues. How do I diagnose this infection? Diagnosis is based on symptoms and not just a stool sample. And now recent guidelines say that you probably want to do a two-step algorithm rather than a one-step test, which is GDH followed by enzyme immunoassay to make a better diagnosis of C. difficile infection. Just the test itself does not give you the diagnosis. The diagnosis is test and patient symptoms and risk factors put together. When you see someone with a first episode, how do you treat that first episode? Treatment is based on severity. For non fulminant infection, you use vancomycin or fidaxomycin. For a fulminant infection, you use vancomycin in combination with metronidazole. In patients who are at a high risk for recurrence, one can use intravenous bezlotuximab, which is now in clinical guidelines for management of C. difficile infection. About 20% of people who get C. difficile infection end up having a recurrence. The recurrence first time is managed differently from a first infection. If you used vancomycin, use fidaxomycin. If you used vancomycin, you could also use a vancomycin pulse and taper now for the first recurrence, which is different from previous guidelines. Bezlotuximab has an advantage in patients with first recurrence and can be used in this clinical situation. When you have patients with three or more episodes or two recurrences, the risk of recurrent C. difficile infection skyrockets to above 60%. In that situation, one should start treating those patients first with antibiotics and then follow that with microbiome restoration therapies. This article covers in details what are the different microbiome restoration therapies available, what is fecal transplantation, how do we perform fecal microbiota transplantation, what are the benefits, what are the risks, and what is the FDA stance on microbiome restoration therapies are covered in detail in these articles. Additionally, what is the role of probiotics? This time, probiotics don't have a very well-defined role in the management of C. difficile infection. Another clinical question that I've answered in this manuscript is, what's the role of oral vancomycin prophylaxis? Some retrospective studies have shown that oral vancomycin prophylaxis may be beneficial in patients with a recent C. difficile infection, but probably not beneficial in somebody whom, in whom you're using this for primary prophylaxis. I've outlined some of the data and recommendations behind oral vancomycin prophylaxis in this manuscript. And then finally, how do we educate patients who have C. difficile infection? There are patient education materials available through the Center for Disease Control. A lot of organizations have patient education materials, and then there are external sources like the C. difficile foundation that provides patient support and patient education material. In a sense, I'm hoping that this article will help you answer all clinical questions that come up in your day-to-day -day management for recurrent C. difficile infection. Thank you for your attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. 
There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.